Welcome to the Scientific Publication Cycle video series. My name is Professor Nora Belzowski. I've been a member of the library faculty since 2012, and I'm the university's science and engineering librarian. The purpose of this presentation is to help you learn the different stages of research and to become familiar with different genres of scholarly writing and publication that occur at each stage. Knowing the different types of publications and the type of information within will help you be more efficient and successful as you seek information to support your own research. On a note of acknowledgement, the Scientific Publication Wheel was originally developed at the University of Washington. With their permission, Professor Tricia Milam first adapted it to teach freshman engineering students. Over the years, Professor Donna Resitar continued to develop it for use with biology, chemistry, and physics students. Professor Kim Whalen also uses it with nursing students. These series of videos were put together with extensive input from Professor Donna Resitar, Associate Dean of Library Services, and the former science and engineering librarian. In this introductory video, we will explain the scientific publication cycle using this diagram. Its purpose is to model how scientific knowledge is generated and communicated. Even though publication formats and avenues of access will change with technology, the process of developing scientific knowledge will not. The inner circle represents the time cycle. The time cycle varies with scientific discipline and individual project. While some research can get on the fast track and become public quickly, other projects may take years. The second circle is the knowledge cycle. The circle illustrates how information is developed, evaluated, and reformatted over time before it becomes accepted as scientific knowledge. Knowledge grows from developing an idea or hypothesis to testing it, to evaluating, and reviewing the new information. As the information becomes acknowledged and accepted, it becomes generalized, popularized, and formally taught to the next generation as accepted knowledge. Accepted knowledge may change as new information becomes available. The third circle is the publication cycle. It illustrates some of the vehicles for recording and documenting information and knowledge. We use the term publication rather loosely to mean a vehicle of communication. In some cases, it can be oral. In other situations, the document is a personal communication and not published. We will look at examples of these various means of communication shortly. Understanding these types of publications and the type of knowledge within will help you with the next part of the circle, the access circle. The access circle notes ways you can get to the knowledge contained within those publications. The diagram illustrates that different access venues lead to different types of publications and different permutations of knowledge. We will cover the access cycle in a future lesson. Your goal now is to understand the different types of publications and the knowledge within so that you can find and use them appropriately in your research. The different types of publications serve different purposes. If you have not done so already, make a printout of the wheel as you see it here. Later, you will be instructed about how to make it into a compass to guide your research. So in summary, there are four rings in the diagram representing time, knowledge development, communication of knowledge through publication, and accessing publications and the knowledge within. As a student, knowing what you seek in terms of the inner rings will help you choose the appropriate access method. First though, you need to understand the difference between primary, secondary, and tertiary literature. The meaning of these terms varies with discipline. In the humanities or law, the primary literature serves as the object of study. For example, in the field of history, the primary literature includes materials written at the time of a past event. In the sciences, the primary literature discusses original research. In a formal publication, primary research can be recognized by the inclusion of a description of how the research was conducted. Usually, but not always, this description falls under the heading materials and methods. Secondary literature is one step away from the primary literature. Secondary literature often describes, summarizes, or distills the primary literature. 
For example, in the field of law, the primary literature consists of the laws themselves and the documents created that led up to the enactment of the law. The secondary literature would be journal articles and books about the law. Tertiary literature is based on and further distills or generalizes the secondary literature. The science you see in newspapers or on a blog may represent tertiary literature. While a newspaper article may be considered primary in history because of when it was written, it would never be considered a primary source in science or engineering. If you have not done so already, make a printout of the wheel as you see it here. The next slide will show you the first step in making this a compass to guide your research. So now we're going to start turning the printout you made of your wheel into a compass to guide your research. On your printout, draw the red-blue line exactly as you see it here. Everything on the red half, including every document type we have reviewed thus far, is generally considered primary. Remember, primary literature is distinguished by presentation of an original idea or original research results. If presenting results in a formal paper, the paper often includes a description of materials and methods. So we're now going to begin reviewing the document types on the blue side of the line. These fall into the category of secondary or tertiary. Remember, secondary literature often compiles, synthesizes, and summarizes the primary literature. Secondary literature may be written for a scholarly or professional audience, or it may be written for non-scientists and be popular. However, just because a source is secondary doesn't mean it is bad or worthless. Whether scholarly or popular, secondary sources may have a role to play in your research process. You need to learn how to recognize them and when to use them appropriately. On your printout, write the words primary literature exactly as you see it here. Above, conference papers, and below, letters, memos, emails, and grant proposals. Write the words secondary literature above academic monographs and below Wikipedia. Write the words tertiary literature in the upper left corner near the words textbooks. You will use these words later to complete your compass. This concludes our introduction. You are now ready to move on to chapter one, North by Northeast, the early stages of the research process.